Good evening, everybody. So tonight, I kind of wanted to do like a six-month overview of my overall system and my production as a whole. I want to look at how much solar I've brought in and how much power I've used, as well as how much I've saved on my electric bill. So if you've been following along for any period of time, you'll know that back in January, the inverters behind me were replaced. I was this huge, long, about a month long ordeal of, of getting my inverters are made and swapped out. And that was Signature Solar reached out to me to switch those out because of a lot of the issues that I was having. And I got the new units installed near the end of January. So I'm at the tail end of, well, I guess in Michigan, winter can go, go on for quite some time. So we're smack dab in the middle of winter. <laughs> but it was an odd winter. You know, we didn't have a ton of snow through the first few months anyways. But I want to go into Solar Assistant and look at a lot of the data that I've got from these last several months and do kind of an overview of how things have worked. So real quick, we've got two 6500 EX inverters in split phase. And then over here, I have two DIY battery banks. Each bank is 280 amp hours a piece at 48 volts nominal. So that puts me around, what, 28, 29 kilowatts of storage. I'm taking a look at a picture outside. It's kind of dark right now. Looking at this picture, you can see my arrays. I've got a total of about 6,200 watts of storage, and that's between 11 455-watt solar ever panels and 12 100-watt Renogy panels. And if we take a look at the inverter, we can scroll up. So this is my phase two inverter. We can see that this inverter has produced 1.3 megawatts of PV and output 1.6 megawatts of power. And if we look at inverter one, we can see this inverter has produced 1.6 megawatt hours of PV and 1.3 megawatt hours of output. So looking at solar resistant here, done pretty well for the day, 89% battery, and we still have some solar coming in. But I'm more interested in really the totals section. And I want to look at really the midsection, which gives me this display of the last 52 weeks in the last 12 months. So we can see right here there was a gap in December and really a significant portion of January. And we can kind of see that over here because January's load was really tiny compared to these other months. So I'm, I'm not really paying too much attention to September through the beginning of December because those were different inverters. And really there was a whole lot of connecting and disconnecting different things, trying to get things prepped and ready to go. So I really wanted to just focus on, on this section here. We really had an odd winter. There wasn't a ton of snow at the beginning, and I think that was kind of a downside to some of my solar production, because when we started seeing more snow, there was a whole lot more reflective light, which allowed my panels to pick up more solar, really. And I think you can kind of see that in this, this low here. So 63, 71, 63, and then 82, 108. So you can see that solar really picked up. Now, the other thing to, to note that I noticed was in February. So in my backyard, there's a set of trees that 
in winter time, but between November and the beginning of February, the trees cast a shadow over a large portion of my panels. And as soon as February hit, I could see that that shadow had shifted and my production went up as well. So we can see right here, you know, we're at 271 kilowatt hours of PV coming in. And I saw even at some times in February and even in March, you know, my panels are 6.2 kilowatts. I saw at some time 6.7 coming in because of the cool temperatures and that direct sunlight hitting those panels. And that was kind of really amazing to see. So we had a 400 kilowatt load in February, 271 kilowatts of solar PV. We charged, you know, 179, 180 kilowatts into the battery, and we discharged about the same coming out of the battery. And we used a lot of grid power. And as soon as we went into March, you could see, all right, our power usage went up, but our PV, boy, our PV nearly doubled. We charged a significant more of power into the battery and discharged about the same. And our grid usage was more than half of what it was the prior month, which was just awesome. And I can't remember exactly when I moved the hot water heater over, but I'm assuming it had some, it was somewhere around the March, April range. So you can see our load again went up 600 kilowatts, but our PV went up as well. And April, I'm trying to remember if it was April, uh, it was an okay month for power or for, for PV but it wasn't the greatest. And, so, and you can see that right here by this grid usage, 290 kilowatts. May, May was a beautiful month, lots of sun, 743 kilowatts of PV coming in. You know, that's <laughs> almost just shy of three quarters of a megawatt, which is just, mind-blowing, especially for, for my setup here in Michigan. 394 kilowatt hours going into the battery, and you can see my kilowatt going into the battery was a, quite a bit more, about 14 kilowatts more than what I actually discharged. And I only used 116 kilowatts of grid. Yes! Between that and March, March was just a great feeling seeing that. And I'll show you the, the waves and the fluctuation in my electrical bill here in a minute. And in June, 692 kilowatt load. I know in May and June, we've also been running the air conditioner a little bit more. Now the air conditioner is not on this system, but the blower is. So the blower is gonna be running more. 716 kilowatts of solar, 345 kilowatts charged, 348 discharged, and still under 200 kilowatts for grid. And then we're coming into July now, we're, here we are, the 7th. 142 used of load already, 154 from solar. I know it's been, we're finally starting to get some of the rain that we have not had all year. And so we're having a whole lot more cloudy days. So I think July is gonna end up being a less productive month than some of these other ones. And it's been ridiculously hot. Uh, so far charged 75 kilowatts and discharged 64. And I always like seeing these low numbers. 48.8 kilowatts of grid usage. So where I am in Michigan, we have consumer's energy and I have right here on the screen, my overall usage for the past three and a half years. You can kind of tell by looking at this that I've been trying over the past few years to lower my electric bill based on what I had. Obviously there were some months that I was successful and there were some months that I was not. But looking at the orange compared to the green. 
So the green is really when the solar started to really pay a bit, play a big factor. Even in January, that little bit of solar helped knock down my electric bill. And in February, you can see from last year, 1349 kilowatts down to 792. In March, 1367 down to 548. And April is the biggest one so far, 1378 kilowatts used from 2022 down to 354. Huge savings, which is just amazing. I can see the cost savings already. And then we can come to May 919 from last year down to 451. And in June 676. And June's low because I was cheap. I wasn't running my air conditioner. This year, 335. So I believe 335 is the number to beat so far on my usage. But it's just, I love seeing how this solar is able to help save money. The entire goal of this was for me to be able to save money on a daily basis instead of, well, let me back up. The whole thing that got me into solar in the first place was I was looking for a standby generator. And then I realized the cost of the standby generator and it really just sits there in your yard for the handful of times that you lose power. And then you still have to pay for fuel for that standby generator. And I thought there's got to be a better way that I can save money on a daily basis instead of paying 10 plus thousand dollars for a standby generator and then having to pay for propane costs to power that generator as well. And that's when I started looking into the solar aspect. And now I'm able to see the benefits of having this solar installation and it's saving money every month. So was it worth it going solar? Oh yeah, things have been working great for the most part. I mean, I'm, I'm still saving money as you just saw. There's been issues that have come up over time with the inverters. I haven't had issues with the batteries. I haven't had issues with the solar panels. It's all been related to the inverters. And, you know, I kind of knew that's what was going to happen. You know, you kind of get what you pay for. I really wish that I was able to get some more answers. I still have yet to receive any answers from Signature Solar on quite a few of the issues that I have reported to them. I'm happy to say that they did finally put a change log out and they did finally add a menu option to control the ground neutral bond situation. But other than that, all my questions have really, for the most part, gone unanswered. And I'm kind of getting tired of the flickering light thing. It seems to happen more often. I can't explain it. I know there are certain devices that are creating the, the flicker and everything. I know when surges happen, you get the flicker or you get the pulse or the, it's like five blinks. And then you've got the times to when solar's ramping up or ramping down that you're gonna get your lights blinking and flickering. I know I can't use a dimmer on any of the LEDs in the house because it just, it flickers like crazy. And I've done the high quality bulb thing. You know, I've seen blinking and flickering on incandescent bulbs. So, I mean, it, like I said, I, I knew that I was gonna have some issues just because I did not pay for tier one equipment. I paid for tier two two, tier three, depending on who you talk to, it might be tier none. Uh, there's, <laughs> if you've seen the threads on the forum, yeah, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, you know, overall, I've seen a huge 
cost savings. So it's been well worth being able to see that electric bill be cut. And that's really the big thing. You can tolerate some of the annoyances if you're able to put some of the money back into your pocket, but only to a point. So I kind of just wanted to share all that with you, you know, show you the, the numbers that I've been experiencing, show you the savings I've been able to accumulate, you know, power wise from using the 6,500 inverters, from using the 280 amp hour DIY batteries, and from using my 6.2 kilowatts of, of solar here in Michigan. With all that being said, I want to leave you with a little teaser of what's to come. So some changes are coming and I really just kind of want to leave it like that. Leave that little cliffhanger, leave you wanting more, leaving you wanting to know what's coming up next. Changes are coming and they're going to be fun. So with that, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later.